So, as everyone knows that at the end of most of my videos, I'm always asking, hey, do you have any ideas? And I was asked to do a top five list about species of giant python or giant snake that make good pets. Now, this one's going to be a little bit hard for me because honestly, in my opinion, giant species of snakes don't necessarily make the best pets for a large majority of people. However, there are certain things that I think people can do that will end up making that certain species of these larger snakes would be better pets than others. So with that in mind, we're going to talk about five different species that I think could be good pets. And I'm going to go a little bit more into detail about that. So number one, we're not doing the big five, those being the green anacondas, the African rock sperms, retics, and uh, Indian pythons. Those are the five largest species of python. Not all of those necessarily make pets, but a couple of them will be highlighted on this video today. That being said, every single one of these animals does take a great deal of responsibility as far as handling and knowledge and research and understanding about these animals in general before ever being considered to get that as a pet. However, I'm gonna get more into that as we go through the videos, as well as at the end. So without further ado, let's get started. So when we're talking about these giant species of snakes, we're talking about snakes that achieve over 10 feet in length with regularity, as well as quite a bit of heft and girth. Now animals like the Kribos, like Indian rat snakes, even the indigos, they can get over 10 feet long, but they're not quite that large. We're talking about larger species of snake. And so when we think about that, Normally people don't think about boa constrictors like my girl Cupcake here, but as you can see, she is a very large animal. Boa constrictors, specifically the boa constrictor constrictor, the true red tails, some of those subspecies do very often achieve lengths of 10 feet or more. Now there are several species, subspecies of the boa constrictor. They're found throughout South America, basically all of the entire continent, but there are a couple that in fact do regularly achieve that larger length. The first ones being the larger of the two on average, the Argentinian boas. We have one, he's a little male, he's, twil he's still pretty small, and he's digesting a meal, so he's over over there. But Cupcake here, she is a Guyana boa. She's one of the true, the BCC, the boa constrictor constrictors. These guys, the Guyanas, the Surinams, the Peruvians, the Southern Brazilians, those are all different localities. What are you doing, silly? What are you doing? Um, there are all the different localities of the true of the boa constrictor, the BCC. They are very large. In fact, the, one of the largest ones, and there was a lot of time that went into finding accurate uh, lengths for all of these animals. It is very difficult. There's a lot of uh, conflicting and bad information as well as very misleading information about these animals. But the longest recorded boa constrictor that I could find verified record was 13 feet 1 inch, which is a huge huge animal. So obviously these guys can get very large as well as they're also very adept climbers. So a lot of people who keep them in a six foot cage, but only 18 inches tall or one in or one foot tall, that's not tall enough for some of these guys. Or if that's how you're keeping them, they need to be exercised quite a bit. And I see a lot of people actually have like snake exercise walls where they have their larger animals come out and interact as well as they come out very often and interact and get a lot of that mental stimulation because they're a lot smarter than we give them credit for. That being said, this is probably one of the small, probably the smallest snake species that we're going to talk about on this list. But as you can see, this is still a huge animal. I mean, just look at the size of her head in comparison to my hand. Like, it's just, she's just a big, big girl. And while she's very placid and I love her to death and she goes on out on adventures with me and we go out and do animal education and reptile shows with her as well as quite a few other different animals that we have, a lot of respect needs to be given. And in fact, she is one of the ones that I'm in fact a little bit more wary of than Yang because I haven't had her quite as long and they are a little bit quicker as far as their reaction time than the retics go. That being said, I don't want to be too negative about these guys. They are an amazing species of snake, but again, much larger than a lot of people give them credit for. While the boa constrictor is easily the most recognizable snake on this list, if not the most recognizable snake in general, the Burmese python, like Fierro here, is easily the most notorious. Now, Burmese pythons have gotten quite a bit of reputation in a lot of different ways over the last few years. Originally, they come from Southeast Asia, and in fact, they're endangered where they normally come from. And in fact, because they are endangered and have been for quite some time, they've actually been illegal to import out of the country since they were put on the endangered species list. However, they've been very popular in the pet trade for a number of years now, several decades in fact, 
to where their populations were so high that it wasn't a big issue. Unfortunately, during a series of unfortunate events in the 90s between several hurricanes, legal ramifications of people who owned them as well as uh, in irresponsible owners, a large, major a large population has been released into South Florida and they've established themselves and they are now invasive in South Florida. We're not gonna argue semantics about how many there are, about anything like that. They are a negative, they do have a very large negative impact in the ecosystem in South Florida. And there's enough of them down there to where they're actually starting to be referred to as Everglade pythons or Florida pythons. To be almost distinguished in fact genetically from other pythons both in the wild and in the pet trade. Now, that being said, over there, these guys have been a very a large and huge staple in the pet trade for a very long time since the 80s and 90s. And in fact, in the giant snakes uh, realm of the hobby, these guys have been called the puppy dogs of them, usually being a little bit more placid, a little bit more handleable, and usually a little bit more uh, placation as far as the different species of giant snakes goes as compared to like say anacondas or reticulated pythons. Based on my experience with working with not only Fiero, who is our very special little boy, as well as other Burmese pythons and several retics, I'm gonna say that that isn't necessarily the most accurate description of these guys. It's very individualistic. They have different personalities and the more reticulated pythons have been bred, they're really not the same animals they were back when they kind of, Burmese pythons got that reputation for being the puppy dog of the giant snakes. These guys can be very placid, but as babies, they're very defensive, they're very reactionary, and they are pretty big, and they can grow very quickly. These guys need huge enclosures. And in fact, kind of the staple in the hobby seems to be like an eight-foot enclosure, and honestly, that might not be long enough for these guys. The longest recorded Burmese python in the world was 18 feet, which is a huge Burmese python. Most usually hit around that 12 to 15-foot mark, with obviously females being larger, Fiero being the very special cases we've talked about in the past. That being said, while they can be very handleable, they can be very cage defensive, they can be very territorial, especially to males, and they can be very food motivated to where in fact you will probably get more confusion on bites where it comes from they think you're food than actually being mishandled because eventually you will learn to understand and work with these animals. So that's why when I say that they don't make the best pets for a lot of people, these are very large animals. And even a python this size, with Fiero probably being about five foot long, you need to be able to understand his body language and hopefully be able to avoid situations like that we're gonna talk about further on in this video. Honestly, I believe that a good amount of time needs to be learned and worked with other species of snakes to kind of learn snake body language and the type of signals that they give off because snakes, just like a lot of other species of animals, do have body language and they do give off signals about when is not a good time to be messed with and Burmese pythons and any of the species of snake on this list do in fact do that. But that being said, they can be good pets, again, if you know what you're doing. All right. We had to talk about this one. So, reticulated pythons. I said at the beginning of this video, this is gonna be kind of a huge just asterisk video. And this is really the biggest one here. So this is Yang, we've talked about her before. She's my one reticulated python. She's very large. I don't exactly know how long she is, but probably somewhere between 12 and 15 feet. It's really hard to accurately uh, measure these guys. And honestly, it's not that big of a deal to me. But, that being said, Yang, where are you going? They're originally from Southeast Asia. They're very strong, very powerful animals. They're highly variable. The largest ones can get well into the 20 foot length. Some of the smaller island super dwarf localities never exceed over nine or 10 feet. That being said, they are very large, powerful animals as I'm sitting here kind of catch my breath. She's not squeezing me. She's not constricting at all. She's just running all over the place and I'm having to stop and catch her and I'm very out of breath, I'm very out of shape. These girls are, uh, these guys are very powerful. We all like to give Brian Barcheck a hard time, but when he calls these guys like uh, like constrictor cardio, he's not kidding. Now that being said, obviously out of shape, and I do have someone else here with me, the person operating the camera behind right here. Um, these guys are very large and powerful animals. Yank it back up. Now, I am very comfortable with her, but 
I do understand that she is a very large and powerful animal. She's very strong. Very, very strong. That being said... Ugh. <laughs> that being said, I had worked with snakes for about five or six years before I actually ended up getting Yang here. And that included some other little larger constrictors like Burmese pythons and boa constrictors before I got her, as well as talking to other people who kept reticulated pythons and berms, so I knew kind of what I was getting into. That being said, mistakes do happen, as well as you need to learn to recognize their body language and things that they're doing. For instance, at this point in time, if we're interested in snakes, especially large constrictors, we've probably all seen this video. Now, this one, what happened with this woman, clearly not keeping it or housing it properly is the biggest thing. And then number two, flips it open, snake comes out, it's obviously very hungry. Now this is no fault of the snake, this is at fault of the owner or the handler working with the animal and not understanding that and not taking safety precautions. There are a lot of different techniques that people do use uh, keeping these large constrictors like this to help keep both their safety in mind as well as the animal safety. Those techniques include using a physical barrier, um, tapping on the animals, um, using a snake hook and things like that to essentially make it so that way they are not associating us with food more so than obviously we are the source of food. But that hi gang. But with that in mind, reticulated pythons are huge. This is the longest species of snake in the world. <laughs> I mentioned it before, but it was very difficult to find the accurate and real recorded lengths of all these species of snake. The longest one was Medusa. It was a reticulated python in a zoo here in the United States, and she got 25 feet long. That being said, there was one that out of all of the different like messed up and fake ones like 33 foot long anaconda and things like that that obviously were very misleading that I had pictures of the retake on the tractor plus two different anacondas, like individual snakes. Um, th there was one that was corroborated a long time ago by multiple people. It came up consistently, but because it was never actually recorded, it's not the official one, but that seems to be a 32 foot long snake that was in fact found. However, not officially recorded record, so we can't say that. And there's a lot of places like Reptile Gardens in South Dakota that says, go find me a 30 or 40 foot long python and here's a cash reward for them. That being said, these are very powerful heavy, heavy animals that honestly, there is only one reason why I have one python. And that is because I understand that even the large enclosure that I give her, even all this exercise and moving around and stimulation that I give her outside of her cage is still so much work and effort and responsibility that I know personally, I do not have enough time to give that to an animal who requires that. It's kind of like the large parrots and macaws and things where you need to give so much time and energy and effort into these animals. And these guys are so much more intelligent than we give them credit for. Yang is an amazing animal. She remembers individual people. She remembers my mom, like I talked about in the video where I introduced her to all of you guys. But that being said, out of all the animals on this list, there is actually what I think a much better alternative that still gets you a lot of the same thing. And that is the dwarf retics that I talked about in the beginning of the video. A lot of those island localities are much smaller animals. They never achieve the size as the mainland retics here. And people like Garrett Hartle, who works with Reach Out Reptiles, has been starting to put a lot of the mainland morphs and things that have gotten the retics honestly too popular, in my opinion, into those smaller animals to make them much more manageable. So you still get this very highly intelligent, acrobatic, and agile, and amazingly intelligent snake, but in a much more manageable package because this is a lot. This is quite a few takes doing this because she just keeps kind of running around and just checking stuff out. She's not trying to get away from me. She's just curious and she's so much stronger than me. So I think that if you had the real hankering or really wanted to get into these large constrictors, you stick with maybe one of the super dwarf or the dwarf mixed localities because otherwise you're going to end up with something that potentially could be a little too much for you without a great amount of research. Um, not to entirely dissuade you from getting these large animals, but we have now seen what can happen if you, you know, what just can happen because they are large, powerful animals like we talked about before. Sorry, I hate being really preachy about that, but it's really hard for me to sound super negative while I'm sitting here with a big smile on my face because I'm playing with my, baby girl, with my baby girl Yang here, but it's very true. And it was quite a bit of stuff. And as well as another big thing that we need to think about, and sorry, I, I'm just doing this all because I have Yang here with me right now. Um, 
make sure that you have the ability to keep this snake. Doesn't matter any of the species that we talk about on this list, even if you wanted to get another one that I don't talk about on this list, you need to be able to make sure that you have the ability to keep them. That means that you need to make sure that they are legal in your state, in your county, in your city, if you are renting in your building, and they need to make sure that you have plenty of room to keep them. As I talked about before, this eight foot long cage may not necessarily be the best thing for them. And so if that's what you have, A, maybe don't think about getting that animal, and B, if you have, you have that animal and that is what you can provide, make sure you give them opportunities and plenty of time to exercise and get stimulated outside like I do. While my cage is not necessarily the largest cage it possibly could be, I do give Yang plenty of time out of her cage and working with her and giving her lots of mental and physical stimulus, like running me ragged all around the shop. So with that in mind, we're gonna continue with this list. Again, apologies for being a little too preachy, but I do love me my little Yang. This one was actually one that I wasn't too familiar with in general, and this is the Cuban boa. So the Cuban boas are in the same family as like the Dominican red mountain boas, those really pretty ones that I've talked about in a couple other videos. The only difference is these are actually the second longest species of boa in the world, coming in at only number two under the green anaconda. They frequently reach lengths of over 14 feet in length. Now, they're usually found in, obviously, the island of Cuba, as well as a couple other surrounding islands. They are the largest terrestrial predator on the island of Cuba, and obviously the other islands as well. They're actually a really cool species. Them being a little bit more slender body, like the rest of the family of the different snakes in that genus, they're a lot arboreal. They're actually very often found um, all over the place. They're on the ground, they're in caves, they're up in trees, they're kind of everywhere. They're really, really cool. And as far as actually how their personalities go is according to a lot of people who've worked with them, including Tom, including Tom Crutchfield, they're actually very personable, very calm, and very handleable animals, especially as they get a little bit older. Young animals, with them being obviously little snakes in general, they're a little bit more reactive and a little bit more defensive, but as they get older, they're really, really cool. Out in the wild, they're actually really good generalists, similar to like king snakes and kribos and things, where they'll eat a lot of different varieties of prey items, including ground nesting birds, tree birds, mammals, lizards, amphibians, all over the place. But throughout their age, they really prefer bats. As younger ones, they seem to eat a lot more amphibians and reptiles. I, the mammals still making up the large majority of their diet, but young ones seem to eat a lot more of the ectotherms, so the the cold-blooded animals, and as they get older, they seem to start favoring birds and mammals more and more and more. But again, with bats in general being a big staple of their diets. These are a really cool species of boa, and there's a little bit of variation of their coloration, but overall they kind of have that really nice kind of uniform reddish-orange color throughout. I honestly wish I could end up working with an animal like that, but the way that my plans are and me trying to do better about having larger enclosures for all of the animals I currently have before getting a bunch of other species, it's probably not in the cards to end up getting any one or a pair or any of them for myself, but given the opportunity, I would love to be able to work, handle, and interact with such an amazing species of snake. Again, keeping in mind that these things can get well over 14 feet long. So the last one on the list is the one that I'm actually the least familiar with, but I do know several people who have worked with them, which is why I decided to include them on this list, because I was able to get a little bit more of a knowledge base other than just the articles that I read all and over for all of these videos. This one is actually the Indian Python. Now, these guys have a couple different subspecies, but overall they're found in Central Asia, M Myanmar, Nepal, Pakistan, India, Sri Lanka, and they're really cool. They're very similar in appearance to Burmese pythons, but there are a few differences about them. Number one is that they are actually smaller than the Burmese. They usually end up capping out around 12 feet for the large females, sometimes a little bit more, males being a little bit smaller, but they average that nine to 10 foot range which is about the range that we talked about at the beginning of the video. They're also a lot lighter in color and the behavior is a little bit different as well. They're sometimes called Indian rock or Sri Lankan rock pythons because they're found in a little bit more sparse open grassland areas like the African rock pythons that are known to do so as well. 
They're also a little bit more agile than the Burmese, probably because they're smaller, and they are a much better climbers and swimmers than the Burmese pythons, although they're obviously very good swimmers as well. But these guys actually spend quite a large amount of time in the water. In fact, they've been observed in the wild, specifically in Sri Lanka and Myanmar, spending a large majority of their time in the water with most of their body actually submerged under the surface with just their head poking out, very similar to that like of like the green anaconda, which are really, really cool. Their attitudes seem to be very similar to the Burmese pythons, where it's very kind of individualistic, but as a whole, they're fairly placid as adults. There's not too many people working with them in the United States, and actually because, the, because they don't have the morphs, they never got as popular as the Burmese pythons, but they still kind of got mixed in during the heyday of the importation of a lot of different species of snakes. And so when they're actually doing DNA testing of both captive animals as well as the Burmese that are found down in the Everglades, they actually found certain DNA markers that were in fact crossed with the Sri Lankan or the Indian pythons. So there's a bunch of mutts roaming around right now. Most of the people that I do know that actually work with them, they're working with the Sri Lankan subspecies. And overall, this, it, it seems to be that they're a little bit paler in general. So they're almost like a pale white yellow brown versus that kind of really dark chocolatey brown that the Burmese have. Either way, they're still a really cool species of python. And while I don't necessarily ever want any of them in my collection personally, I would still love to be able to handle this really cool species of python that due to poaching and hunting and human and encroaching onto their habitat, they're actually becoming more and more endangered with Sri Lankans, probably the most endangered subspecies of all. Either way, it's still a really cool species of snake that for a giant species is probably really fun to actually work with. All of those species of snakes, as I said before at the beginning of the video, can make very good animals to work with if you understand about them. There's not really such thing as a real tame snake. There's a lot that can be very handleable. There's a lot that can be very used to and habituated to human interactions and handling. However, these are very large and powerful animals that need to be treated with respect. And so with that in mind, personally, I think that if you ever decide you want one of these larger animals, you know, some being bigger than others, a lot of research needs to be done beforehand. You need to be talking to people who keep them for extended periods of time, see how they keep them, see how different people keep them, talk to the breeders about who you wanna get them from. Personally, as I've mentioned before, I don't think that these large reptiles, both snakes as well as like water monitors and green iguanas, should be as popular as they are. While they are amazing, incredible animals, and I am very fortunate to be able to actually work with several of them and have several of them myself, I understand that that is a very onerous decision and a lot of responsibility falls on my shoulders to not only be a good example as an educator and a presenter here on YouTube, but as an animal advocate and as an animal owner as well. So with that in mind, I really encourage anyone who's considered getting a large species of snake, one of the giant species of snakes, the ones that get over that 10 feet mark, to really do a whole lot of research, watch videos, not just that I have, go check out other species like wildfire retics and all the other people that sit there and actually keep those animals for extended periods of time and listen to them too. You need to be very knowledgeable about these animals. They need to be treated and given the respect that they absolutely deserve. And a lot of understanding and knowledge needs to be given to these animals because they are very large and powerful animals. Sorry, I hate ending on a negative note. I just wanna be very serious about that, that I, again, don't think that they are the best pets for a lot of people because they just don't understand them enough before they decide to get one because of how popular they are. That being said, I obviously still love all of mine. You've seen me interact with all of my guys. I love them to death, even when they're cranky, even when I'm cranky. The best parts of my life, I absolutely love them. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you didn't uh, get too mad at me for grandstanding a little bit too much. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know down in the comments. Hit me up on all of my other all of my uh, other social medias, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, all of that. Hope everyone having a great day, and we will check you next time.